FileZilla Pro Series. These tutorials are aimed at illustrating how to best use FileZilla Pro, FileZilla flagship product. This video collects all FileZilla Pro tutorials to learn how to use FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to install FileZilla Pro on Windows. FileZilla Pro is the fastest and most reliable file transfer application for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It supports all FTP-like protocols, plus over 20 cloud storage services. Open your browser and go to FileZilla Pro website to buy it with confidence. If you are running Windows 64-bit, go ahead and install the downloadable version. Otherwise, go to the download page you find in the welcome email. The operating system will ask you to confirm you want to allow this program to make changes on your device. Once you confirm, FileZilla Pro Wizard will guide you through the installation process. You are asked to agree to FileZilla Pro licenses terms and privacy policy. FileZilla Pro asks you to decide if anyone can use it on your computer or if it is only for your user account. Make your choice and click Next. FileZilla Pro then asks you which component you want to install. If you wish to have an icon on the desktop, select that option. Next, you have to decide where to install FileZilla Pro. If you are OK with the default location, just click on the Next button. Now you can choose the Start Menu folder for FileZilla Pro. Note that if you don't want to create a shortcut, you can select the checkbox at the bottom left. FileZilla Pro is getting installed. Once FileZilla Pro is installed, you can get it launched or you can launch it later. In the welcome screen, you'll find useful information about FileZilla Pro and how to learn more about it. You can open it again through the help menu. In this video, you learned how to install FileZilla Pro on Windows. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to register and deregister your copy of FileZilla Pro. You can register your copy of FileZilla Pro when installing it. FileZilla Pro will also ask for registration if there is a new version available for update. Launch FileZilla Pro. If you have skipped it at installation time, choose Check for Updates option to start the registration. In order to register your copy of FileZilla Pro, you need the registration key. If you don't have the registration key, you can use your purchase details to register. The purchase details are the email you use to purchase FileZilla Pro and your order number. You can find it in your purchase confirmation email. If you can't find it or have lost your registration key, send an email to info at FileZillaPro.com asking for help. Press OK to submit the purchase details and register your copy. If your clock is not correctly set, you will receive an error message like this. Sync your computer's clock with the Internet and try again. Make sure you are connected to the Internet, otherwise you will get a registration error. If your data is valid, a registration key will be provided. Store your registration key safely. You will also receive an email with your registration key. If you need to reinstall FileZilla Pro, you have to use your registration key again. Learn how to register offline your copy of FileZilla Pro. If you're behind a corporate firewall that doesn't allow FileZilla Pro to register or you need to register your copy without internet access, you might need to register offline. Launch FileZilla Pro. If you didn't register your copy at installation time, choose Check for Updates option to start the registration. Switch to Offline Registration. To register your copy of FileZilla Pro, you need the registration key or your purchase details. Enter your registration key. Press OK to submit the registration request. The registration request window pops up. You can copy it to the clipboard or save it to a file. Now visit FileZilla Pro registration website. Either paste the registration request or if you saved it in a file, click Browse to load the file. Accept FileZilla Pro terms and conditions. Submit the registration request. A confirmation code is created. Either copy it to the clipboard or save it to a file. Back to FileZilla Pro. 
enter the registration confirmation code in the registration confirmation window or click load from file to load the file. Click OK to register your copy. You learned how to register offline FileZilla Pro. If you've previously registered FileZilla Pro, you may need to deregister it before registering a new copy. Navigate to the FileZilla Pro installation directory. Click on the Deregister shortcut. To deregister, you need to enter your registration key. If FileZilla Pro is currently running, you'll receive a notification to close it and try again. Confirm your approval for FileZilla Pro to apply the changes. FileZilla Pro has now been successfully deregistered and you can proceed to register a new copy. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. It is a method for moving files between computers in a network. FTP is widely used on internet to, for example, upload and manage website files. FTP uses a client-server architecture. The client, for example FileZilla or FileZilla Pro, sends a connection request, usually to server port 21, as per protocol specifications you find in the description. This is the so-called control connection. The control connection is used for sending and receiving commands and responses. For the transfer of files and folder contents, separate data connections are used. These can be established in two ways. In active mode, the client starts listening on a port and communicating that port number to the server through the control connection. FileZilla and FileZilla Pro use any available port. The server then initiates the data connection to the client's port. In situations where the client cannot accept connections, like when blocked by a firewall, the passive mode has to be used. In the passive mode, the client uses the control connection to request an IP address and port, which are used by the client to open the data connection. FileZilla and FileZilla Pro support both active and passive FTP modes, passive mode being the default. The client sends the username and the password through the control connection. The server authenticates the login data and grants or denies access. If the access is granted, the client can send commands to the server. The server checks the user's permissions and performs upload, download, list, or delete commands. The commands take the form of a code, followed by parameters, if any. Note that FTP is not encrypted, thus all information including the username and password is transferred in clear text. FTPS, which stands for FTP over TLS in the other hand, encrypts the connection. With FTPS, the client sends a command to start an encrypted connection using TLS. Not to be confused with SFTP, which is another protocol. We address SFTP in another video. FileZilla and FileZilla Pro automatically try to use FTPS and warns if the server does not support it. FileZilla and FileZilla Pro supports both non-encrypted and encrypted FTP connections. SFTP stands for SSH File Transfer Protocol, while SSH means Secure Shell. SFTP is a method for moving files between computers in a network. It works differently from FTP and FTPS. SFTP is an extension of SSH. SSH is a protocol that provides a secure channel in a client-server architecture. SSH uses public key cryptography to authenticate the server. To authenticate the client, public key cryptography can be used, or alternatively, the client can use a password. How SFTP works? SFTP is a complex protocol. In this video, we give a detailed explanation on how SFTP connections are established. A client like FileZilla or FileZilla Pro sends a connection request to the server. The server sends the SSH welcome message with the highest supported protocol version. The client then sends its SSH welcome message with its highest supported protocol version. The server sends its supported algorithms and a small amount of random data as session cookie. The client also sends its supported algorithms and a random session cookie. The client then starts the key exchange using an algorithm supported by both and sends the parameters to the server. The server replies with its parameters and its public key. The server calculates a hash of all data exchanged so far and signs it using its private key. The signature is sent to the client. The client also calculates the hash of all data exchanged. It checks the signature with the server public key 
If it does not match, the connection is aborted. From this point on, the connection is encrypted using cryptographic keys derived from the exchanged parameters. The client sends user ID and password. The server authenticates and replies if access has been granted. The client then asks the server to start the SFTP subsystem. The server returns failure or success. The client sends its supported SFTP subsystem version. The server sends its supported SFTP subsystem version. The client can now send requests for file operations. The server checks the permission for the operation, and if allowed, the operation is performed. Then returns success or failure. SFTP is supported by both FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn how to quickly connect to a site using FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. In the host box, enter the host name or IP address. You can prefix the server name with the protocol name. FileZilla supports FTP, FTPS, SFTP, while FileZilla Pro also supports S3. Enter the username. Enter the password. Enter the port number or leave blank for the default port number. Click the button and FileZilla will connect. In this menu, you can clear the fields, clear the history, or choose a previously connected server. For other protocols and advanced options, use the Site Manager to create a site and connect. In this video, you learn how to quickly connect to a server with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use FileZilla and FileZilla Pro Site Manager. The Site Manager is where you configure and organize the server connections. You can open it from the menu or pressing Ctrl S or Command S on Mac OS. To create a new server connection, choose New Site. Name it as you wish. In the right side, you can configure your connection. Connection details depends on the protocol type. Some options may not be available for all protocols. You can configure both the background and the tab color. In the Advanced tab, you can configure the server type, proxy bypass, the local and remote directories that will be opened when the connection is established, synchronized browsing, and directory comparison. To learn more about directory comparison and synchronized browsing, watch the videos in the description. And last, the time offset from the server time. In the transfer settings, you can configure the transfer mode. The transfer mode configuration is available only for FTP. To know more about transfer mode, watch the transfer types video. You can also configure the number of concurrent connections. And last, the care set tab. You specify the character set used to communicate with the server. Your server connection is configured and now you can connect to it. In the Site Manager, you can create folders to organize your servers. New sites are created under the selected folder. You can drag existing server connections to the folder. The folders are shown as submenus in the drop-down toolbar menu. Rename the server connection, delete it, or create a copy of it. You can create a bookmark for a connection. To learn how to use bookmarks, watch the bookmarks video. Last but not least, you can configure FileZilla and FileZilla Pro to open the Site Manager at Startup in the interface settings. Choose the option to open the Site Manager at Startup. In the next run, the Site Manager opens at Startup. In this video, you learn how to use with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro Site Manager. In this video, you will learn how to organize your FileZilla or FileZilla Pro Site Manager entries. If you have many entries, it might be difficult to list them all in the toolbar. You can create folders to organize the entries. Click New Folder and name it as you like. Then just drag and drop the entries you want in the newly created folder. You may select several entries and drag them all together. Now you can see the newly created folder and its entries as a submenu. In this video, you learn how to organize your FileZilla or FileZilla Pro site entries. In this video, we'll teach you how to transfer files with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to transfer files using FTP with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions also work with all the other supported protocols.
To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. Select the connection you want to use. Wait until the connection is completed. On the left side, you see your local files. You can navigate to any directory in your local file system. On the right side, you see the files and directories on the remote server. Now you are ready to upload files to the remote side. To transfer file, you can simply double-click the file name in the file list. You can also right-click in the file name and select Upload to transfer files to the current remote directory. If you need to transfer several files, just select them, right-click and choose Upload. You can also use the transfer queue to transfer several files and directories. First, add directories and files to the transfer queue. Then, just start the queue processing to have your files uploaded. To transfer files from the remote side, you proceed the same way. First, create a new local directory to store your files. To download one file only, just double-click it. Select and right-click to download several files. The transfer queue also works for file and directory download. Then, just start the queue processing to have your files uploaded. In this video, you learned how to upload and download files using FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn how to troubleshoot FTP connections with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. If you are experiencing connection errors and getting the could not connect to server error message, there are a few things you need to check. First, check your site connection settings. Is the hostname or the IP address correct? Are both the username and password correct? Copy and paste might not work properly in some circumstances, try to type the password instead. If the connection error still persists, you may want to try our FTP tester. The link can be found in this video description. Another possible cause is the connection is being blocked by a firewall. Try to disable the local firewall provided by the operating system or by an antivirus. If you are in a corporate network, you may need to ask the network administrator to open specific FTP ports. See FileZilla Knowledge Base for details. You find the link in the video description. In this video, you learned how to troubleshoot FTP connections with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to update your blog with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. Before uploading, get your FTP credentials. Usually, your hosting provider sends them in the welcome email. If you have problems to locate your FTP account, you can either contact your hosting provider, or if you have access to an administration panel such as cPanel, the most common administration panel, you can create a new FTP account. Choose FTP Accounts. Enter the new account ID. Enter and repeat the password. In the directory, enter the path to your blog installation. In this case is the standard WordPress installation path. Contact your hosting provider or system administrator if you don't know the path. And then create the FTP account. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. To connect, create a new connection on Site Manager. Fill the hostname, the user, and the password. Proceed to connect.
After the successful connection, you will see on the right side your WordPress files. You can now edit your files. After editing your file, FileZilla detects the change and offers to upload the changed file. Choose Yes to upload the changed file, and FileZilla replaces it on the server. In this video, you learned how to change your WordPress site with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn three things you might not know about FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. The first thing is, you can drag and drop files to transfer them to and from remote servers. On Windows, you can drag and drop to and from Windows Explorer. First, connect to your remote site. Select one or more files on the remote site and drag them to a local directory. The selected files are automatically transferred to your local directory. To transfer to the remote site, select the files in your local directory and drag them to the remote site file view. Also in this case, the selected files are automatically transferred to the remote site. Drag and drop work the same way for any supported protocol. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Second, if you are experiencing problems to connect to your FTP server, you may want to try our online FTP tester and make sure it works. Just fill in the FTP connection details and press Test My Server. You will see a log of your test, either the connection works or not. If it fails, it will tell you what are the possible reasons. Third, you might not know that you can keep multiple connections open for different accounts. When connecting to another site, you can choose to open it in a new tab. A new tab is created for the new connection, but the existing connection is still open in the previous tab. In this video, you got answered three basic questions you always wanted to ask about FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn three more things you might not know about FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. The first feature allows you to save your current connection to Site Manager. Connect either by choosing a previous connection or using the Quick Connection option. Now select the option Copy Current Connection to Site Manager. A new entry is created in the Site Manager. The second feature is the Manual Transfer. With manual transfer, you can either download or upload a single file. Choose the local file to upload or enter the remote file to download. Choose to transfer with the currently connected server or choose an existing configured server or configure a new connection for this transfer only. Choose the data type for the transfer. You can add the transfer to the queue or start it immediately. The last feature is the reconnect with this option, you can reconnect to the last connection when you start FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. You can use this feature also to reconnect after a disconnection. In this video, you learned three new things about FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to preserve timestamps while transferring files with FileZilla Pro. While we use Google Drive, the instructions work also with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla Pro. Connect to your site. Enable timestamp preservation. From the main menu, choose Transfer Preserve Timestamps. Upload your file normally. Note that last modified date and time on the remote file is the same as on the local file. This also works when downloading files. Again, see that the last modified date and time on the local file is the same as on the remote file. The timestamp preservation on downloads is supported for all protocols. However, some protocols do not support it for uploads. In the video description, there is a link for the knowledge base with more information. In this video, you learn how to preserve timestamps while transferring files with FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn three additional things you might not know about FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. Setting default directories. We'll show you how to connect to a specific directory of a remote site. Open Site Manager. Create a new site 
or choose an existing one. For new sites, fill in general tabs parameters. Select the Advanced tab. For the default local directory, click Browse to choose the local directory. You can also enter the remote directory. You can either enter both directories or only one. Next time you connect to this site, FileZilla or FileZilla Pro will automatically display those directories. Set up check for updates frequency. By default, FileZilla and FileZilla Pro check for program updates once a week and looks only for stable updates, no beta or nightly build updates. To change that, open FileZilla settings. Select updates. You can choose how often FileZilla checks for updates and you can also choose which versions you want to update to. We strongly recommend that you only use stable versions of FileZilla unless you want to test new features that may not be reliable yet. Also, never disable update checks as sometimes our updates may fix security vulnerabilities. By default, FileZilla and FileZilla Pro use any available local port for active mode. You can set the range of local ports. Open FileZilla settings Select Active Mode, enable the local port range, and then enter the bottom and top of the range. In this video, you learn three additional things about FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn three additional things you might not know about FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. Organize your Site Manager entries. If you have many entries in your Site Manager, it might be difficult to list them all in the toolbar. You can create folders to organize the entries. Click New Folder and name it as you like. Then just drag and drop the entries you wish into the newly created folder. Now you can see the newly folder and its entries as a submenu. Configure the file list sorting order. By default, FileZilla and FileZilla Pro sort files in standard alphabetical order and place directories at the top. Sorting is case insensitive on Windows and case sensitive in other platforms. With prioritized directories, FileZilla lists directories first in alphabetical order. Keep directories on top lists directories first. Sort directories in line lists all entries in strict alphabetical order, no matter if they are files or directories. With case insensitive, there are no differences between lowercase and uppercase letters. With case sensitive, uppercase letters are listed before lowercase letters. Natural sort is case sensitive and sorts whole numbers instead of only sorting digits. Connect from the quick connect bar for one time only connections. Enter the server address. It defaults to FTP, but you can specify the protocol using a prefix. Enter the username and password if required. If you port blank, FileZilla will use the default port for the protocol. Now you can connect using the connection data you provided. In this video, you learn three additional things about FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to securely use FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions also work with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. In FileZilla and FileZilla Pro, almost all protocols require a password. By default, FileZilla stores passwords together with other site information, like the user or host name. If password storing is disabled, FileZilla will ask you to enter the password every time you connect. This is recommended when using FileZilla from a public computer or someone else's computer you cannot guarantee won't be compromised in the future. For an additional level of protection, users can enable a master password. That is a password to encrypt all passwords with. Be aware that if you lose the master password, it will not be possible to restore any stored password. When connecting, FileZilla asks for the master password. FileZilla does not require you to rewrite the master password at every connection. 
you can disable the master password by choosing the other options. When disabling the master password, you have the option to restore the passwords by entering the master password, or in case you lost the master password, you can delete all passwords. In this case, you have to re-enter all the passwords again via Site Manager. Again, if you're using FileZilla from a public computer, it is important to remove all stored sensitive information. This includes any data entered in the Quick Connect box, connection data from the last used server, any site you created in the Site Manager, and finally, any transfer queue information. In this video, you learned how to manage FileZilla and FileZilla Pro securely. In this tutorial, you will learn how to search files with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions also work with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use comparative search with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions work also with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. Select the connection you want to use. Wait until the connection is completed. Open the search dialog to search your files, either locally or remotely. FileZilla searches under the current selected directory and its subdirectories. Choose how to apply the search conditions. Search conditions allow you to locate files that meet specified criteria for file name, size, path, and last modification date. FileZilla allows you to combine several search conditions. Use the conditions to narrow your search. FileZilla searches files and directories. Here we are only interested on searching for files. Click Search to start the search. FileZilla will run the search and show the results. Once you find the desired file, you can download it or do what you need to. FileZilla can recreate the directory structure if you want or simply transfer the files to the target directory. There is an option to start the download immediately or to add the files to the queue to have them transferred later. You can also search within the current directory by typing the file name. As you type, FileZilla selects the first file starting with the typed letters. Type the letter B, now type the letter R. FileZilla first selects the file starting with B, and then the first file starting with BR. This type of search is applied within the current listed files. If you just want to find files with a given name, open the Quick Search box, pressing Ctrl F. If you are on Mac, press Command F instead. Enter the text you want to search. FileZilla will show only the files containing the search text. Use Quick Search options to modify the way FileZilla does the search. For example, you can invert the search. The result will hide all the files containing the search text. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. With comparative search, you can recursively search in both local and remote sides and additionally compare the results. Open the search dialog box. Comparative is a new option in the search dialog. Enter both the local and the remote directories. You can set the search conditions. Each rule can be based on file name, file size, path, or date. You can run a case insensitive or case sensitive search by selecting this option. And if you want to search only files or only directories, select Search to start the search and comparison. 
If no criteria is entered, all files are returned. The comparison is based on file sizes, but you can change to compare based on file modification time. You can filter the list to show only files that exist either on the local or on the remote directories, but not on both. Scrolling one list makes the other list scroll too. In the local file list, you can upload, open, show, or delete a file, while in the right side you can download, view, or edit, delete, or copy the file URL. In this video, you learn how to use comparative search with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn how to configure FileZilla and FileZilla Pro simultaneous transfers. If you have to move a lot of small files, to speed up the transfer, you can set the maximum simultaneous transfer. Choose Edit, Settings, Transfers, and set the maximum simultaneous transfers to 10. Also, increase the simultaneous download or upload limits, depending if you are downloading or uploading a lot of files. To transfer large files, instead, we recommend a different configuration. In concurrent transfer configuration, set the maximum simultaneous transfers to one or two. Decreasing simultaneous transfers minimizes the chance of having issues like timeouts and performance loss from excessive disk thrashing and fragmentation. In this video, you learned how to configure FileZilla and FileZilla Pro simultaneous transfers. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to a SFTP server with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn how to connect to a SFTP server using a file key with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In order to connect, you will need the IP address or DNS name of your server and the private key file. If you have only the password, configure your connection logon type as normal and use the password. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select SFTP, SSH File Transfer Protocol as the protocol. Enter the IP address or host name of your server. Select Key File as the logon type. Now enter the username. And in the Key File box, enter the path for your key file. If everything is correct, now you can connect. The Unknown Host Key dialog is shown you have to confirm this is correct. You can also choose to trust this server in future connections. Click OK to accept the host. FileZilla connects to the server with the configured key. In the right side, you see your directories and files. You can also use PuTTY's key agent to handle your key file. If your key file is not yet in the PPK format, you need to convert it first. You can use PuTTY Key Generator tool Download and install PuTTY. You will find the link in this video description. In the Key Generator tool, load your key. Enter and confirm a passphrase to protect your key. You will need this passphrase later. Finally, save your private key in PPK format. Launch Pageant. The SSH key agent in the system tray, locate the pageant icon. Right-click and choose Add Key. Select your private key file and enter the password you created earlier. The agent is now able to use your private key. Now back to FileZilla. Configure your connection. Change the logon type to Normal. If the agent is used, you can leave the password field empty. If everything is correct, now you can connect. In this video, you learned how to connect to a SFTP server using a key file with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to configure FTP file transfer types with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FTP transfer types with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. FTP transfer can be of two types, ASCII or binary. ASCII type is used to transfer text files. The format of text files vary on different platforms, and a conversion between the client and the server may be necessary. With the ASCII type, the text file is correctly converted. With the binary type, the files are transferred without conversion. 
This type is suitable to transfer images or data files. The Auto option enables automatic detection of the most appropriate transfer type for a file. That is, it will use the ASCII type for text files and binary type for every other type of file. You can also configure which file types have to be managed as text file. To add a new file extension, enter the file extension without the dot, then click Add. Now files with that extension will be managed as text files and as such transferred using the ASCII transfer type. By selecting this option, files without extension will be managed as text files and transferred as ASCII transfer type. Also with this option, files starting with a dot will be managed as text files. The transfer type can also be modified while your connection is active. In the transfer type menu, you can choose automatic, ASCII, or binary transfer types. These options are also available from the transfer type icon in the status bar. For a more detailed description of FTP transfer type, visit the link you find in the description of this video. In this video, you learn how to configure transfer types with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use the transfer queue with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions also work with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. Select the connection you want to use. Wait until the connection is completed. The transfer queue is used by FileZilla when either uploading or downloading a file. When you select a file for upload or download, FileZilla adds the file to the queue and starts to process it immediately. You can also add files or directories to the queue. Selecting a directory, all its files get added to the queue. You can process the queue later. If you start with an empty queue, files are transferred in the order they are added to the queue. You can change the order files are processed. You can also change the order by changing the priority. Higher priority files are processed first. The order depends on the configuration for simultaneous transfers and if there are transfers for different servers in the queue. You can also set what to do when FileZilla finds an existing file. The default action is configured in the settings. Or you can configure the action in the queue either for a file or for all files in the queue. You can also select which action to do after FileZilla processed the queue. FileZilla saves the queue between sessions. If you close FileZilla and opens it again, the queue entries are still there. You don't even need to reconnect. FileZilla will automatically connect to process the queue. To clean the queue, select Stop and Remove All in the Queue view. In this video, you learned how to use Transfer Queue with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to compare directories with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions also work with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. Select the connection you want to use. 
wait until the connection is completed. Open your local directory. Then open the remote directory. Now you can enable the directory comparison. By default, FileZilla and FileZilla Pro shows differences based on the last modified column. In green, you see the last modified files, that is, the most recent files. In yellow, you see files that exist only on one side. You can also change the type of comparison to be based on the file size. In this type of comparison, the files with different sizes are shown in red. With synchronized browsing, you can easily compare subdirectories on both sides. When you visit a directory on one side, FileZilla automatically visits the directory with the same name in the other side. In this video, you learned how to compare directories using FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use directory filters with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions also work with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. Select the connection you want to use. Wait until the connection is completed. Directory filters help you focus on the files that are important to you. FileZilla comes with a set of easy-to-use predefined filters. We'll show you how to define a new one. First, click the Edit Filter Rules button. Click New to create a new empty filter. Give a name to the filter. Filter settings tell how the filter will be applied to the directory and file list. Here you define which column is affected by the condition, file name, size, attribute, path, or date. You can set different conditions depending on the column you choose. we will apply the condition to the file name. We want to hide file names that begin with a given string. The string of text is the tilde, typically the first character of the Microsoft Office temporary files. Since we are interested in applying the filter to files only, we unselect directories. The new filter is now available both for local and remote lists. To use the filter, just check it and click Apply. Notice that temporary files have disappeared, but they are not gone. They are still there. Now look at the list status bar. You can see the number of files and directories, the total size, and the number of entries that were filtered out. Clear the filter selection and all files will be listed again. Let's now filter the remote side. You can also save the filter selection as a new filter set to use it later. In this video, you learn how to use directory filters with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to use tabbed browsing with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use tabs with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions also work with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. With tab browsing, you can have multiple connections at the same time. To add a tab, choose File, New Tab, or press Ctrl T. A new empty tab is created. Your existing connection is still active in the old tab. In the new tab, you can open a new connection. Each tab is independent and can show different local files. You can configure FileZilla or FileZilla Pro to restore the tabs and reconnect on startup.
With this option enabled, FileZilla or FileZilla Pro will reopen the tabs and establish all connections. You can also configure FileZilla or FileZilla Pro to create always a new tab when opening a new connection. In this video, you learned how to use tabbed browsing with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to edit remote files with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to edit your remote files with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use S3, the instructions work also with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, Watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. From FileZilla or FileZilla Pro, you can edit your remote files. To edit the file, right-click it and choose View Edit. FileZilla copies the file to a temporary local file. The default editor for that type of file is launched. For example, in this case, Notepad opens the temporary local file. FileZilla detects if the local copy has changed and asks you if you want to copy the edited copy back on the server. If you don't want to continue editing, select this option. The temporary local file will be deleted. Choose Yes to replace the file on the server. There is no way to detect if the local file is still open by the editor. With this option, you see the files FileZilla tracks as currently being edited and can choose to stop tracking the file or replace the file on the server with the edited local file and keep tracking the file or to stop tracking the local edited file and upload it on the server as it is or to reopen the file. To change the file editing behavior, see the file editing options. By default, FileZilla uses the editor associated with the file's file type. You can use the Operating System Associations and also Customize Associations. To customize an association, enter the file extension followed by the full path of the program to be used to open the file. Now the file will be opened by the configured program. If there are no editors associated with a given file type, the default editor for that type of file is used. You can always configure a custom editor. In this video, you learned how to edit your remote files with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to use FileZilla bookmarks with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. Bookmarks are used to remember local and remote paths over sessions. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use bookmarks with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions also work with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. To create a new bookmark, choose Add Bookmark Entry from Bookmarks menu. Global bookmarks can be applied to any connection. Global bookmarks are recommended to connect to remote servers with the same directory structure or just to access specific local directories. Site-specific bookmarks can be applied only to the connection they were created for. Choose the local directory that will be bookmarked. Then enter the corresponding remote directory. You don't need to fill both directories. FileZilla will change to the directory configured and left the other one unchanged. You can enable synchronized browsing and directory comparison. For details on those, visit Directory Comparison Video. You find the link in the video description. Now you can choose the bookmark and FileZilla will automatically change both the local and remote directories. The site-specific bookmarks are also available from the Site Manager. You can also connect from the bookmark and FileZilla will connect to the site and change to the directories. From the Bookmarks Manager, you can modify existing bookmarks, create new ones, rename them, delete them, or create copies of existing bookmarks. 
In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro defaults file fzdefaults.xml. The file fzdefaults.xml is used to set system-wide default settings for FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. fzdefaults.xml can contain all FileZilla and FileZilla Pro settings. FileZilla loads the settings from fzdefaults.xml and overrides them with the FileZilla.xml settings. However, if the settings are changed from within FileZilla, fzdefaults is not modified. A sample fzdefaults.xml file can be found under Docs subdirectory in the FileZilla installation directory. You can create a fzdefaults file from your current sites and settings configuration. To export the current sites and settings, choose File, Export. In the Export Settings dialog, select the Site Entries and Settings options. Save the file as fzdefaults.xml. Using a text editor, modify the sites and settings as you wish. Copy the fzdefaults file to the same directory where is located FileZilla. You may need to grant access to the destination folder. Now, FileZilla or FileZilla Pro will load the settings from fzdefaults.xml. In this video, you learned how to configure FileZilla Pro defaults file fzdefaults.xml. In this video, we'll teach you how to change the user interface settings of FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to change the user interface settings of FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. The layout setting allows you to change to position of the both local and remote folders and files lists. The classic layout is the default FileZilla layout. Directories at the top, files at the bottom, local directories and files on the left side, and remote directories and files on the right side. With the Explorer layout, the directory trees are positioned to the left of the file lists, just like in Windows Explorer. The widescreen layout puts directories and files, both local and remote, in the same row. The Blackboard layout is similar to the widescreen layout, but the local directory tree stays on the left side and the remote directory tree stays on the right side. Both file lists stay in the middle. The Message Log Position option changes the position of the message log. The default option is to show it above Files and Directories lists. It can be moved next to the Transfer queue. Or it can be a tab in the queue panel. By selecting the Minimize to Tray option, when minimized, FileZilla is located in the system tray. Use the startup configuration to define how FileZilla starts, either normally or showing the site manager or restoring the tabs and reconnecting. The next option defines what happens when starting a connection while already connected to that. With the default option, ask for action. FileZilla asks if the new connection has to be opened in a new tab or if the current connection needs to be closed and the new connection has to be opened in the same tab. With the Select Connect option, the new connection is opened in a new tab. In this case, the new connection is opened in the current tab and the existing connection gets closed. The transfer queue speed shows the average speed. By selecting the Focus Display Momentary option will show the current transfer speed. These options change the way dates and times are shown across FileZilla. With the System Default option, FileZilla uses the format for the current configured language. This option sets the format as the ISO standard format. Or you can configure a custom format. For a list of options, visit the Date and Time Formatting Wiki page. you find the link in the video description. The selected format is applied to both local and remote views you can also configure how FileZilla shows the file size information. This option shows the file size in bytes. The thousands separator makes it easier to read large file sizes. 
you can use any of the three available options for size prefixes to make it easier to read large file sizes. With the prefix options, you can set the number of digits to be displayed. In this video, you learned how to change the user interface settings of FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use site synchronization with FileZilla Pro. While we use FTP, the instructions work also with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Use site synchronization to keep your site entries updated between different FileZilla Pro installations. Launch a first installation of FileZilla Pro. Choose File, Site Synchronization from Main Menu. To configure site synchronization, enable it and choose a protocol of the server where the site data will be stored and enter the connection information. The connection details depend on the selected protocol. Enter the path where the synchronization data will be saved. Make sure you have right access to the location, otherwise FileZilla Pro is not able to save the data. Enter a synchronization passphrase to protect the synchronization data. The password has to be at least eight characters long. Use a long passphrase for better security. An encryption key is derived from this passphrase. The encryption key is used to encrypt the Site Manager data. Now FileZilla Pro saves Site Manager data. Launch a second installation of FileZilla Pro. Choose File, Site Synchronization from the main menu. Configure the connection with the same parameters used in the first installation. Make sure to enter the very same passphrase. Keep it in a safe place. If you lose or forget the passphrase, you will not be able to synchronize the Site Manager data. FileZilla Pro now restores the Site Manager data. Any change to the Site Manager data will be automatically saved. And synchronizes it in the other installation. For security reasons, authentication tokens and the master password are not synchronized. You'll need to enter the password and authenticate every time you launch FileZilla Pro. To disable the synchronization, select Do Not Synchronize Site Manager Data. You will be asked if you want to remove the Site Manager data from the server. Choose No if you do not want to remove it. The local data is never wiped out even if you ask to remove the data from the server. In this video, you'll learn how to use site synchronization with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to backup and restore FileZilla and FileZilla Pro settings. In this tutorial, you will learn how to backup and restore the settings with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. You may want to export FileZilla settings to backup or to share them with other installations. To export settings, choose File, Export. Then you can select the settings to export. This option exports your sites as you see them in the Site Manager. This option exports the general configuration settings as seen in the Edit, Settings menu option. This option exports all entries currently in your transfer queue. This option exports your filter configurations as you see them in the View, Directory Listing, Filters menu option. The settings are exported as a single XML file. To import settings, choose File, Import, and select the file to import. You can select which categories of settings have to be imported. FileZilla will merge those settings with your current setting if for some reason you need to back up the configuration files without using FileZilla. The configuration files are located in your application data folder under the FileZilla folder. Just copy the files in a different folder, install FileZilla, and put them back in that directory. FileZilla will automatically use them. This might be useful when restoring from a disk image. On Mac OS, the configuration files are located in your configuration directory under the FileZilla subdirectory. If you bought FileZilla Pro from the App Store version, the files are under Users Library Directory. In this video, you learned how to backup and restore FileZilla and FileZilla Pro setting. In this video, we'll teach you how to enable logging with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to enable logging with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. 
while we use S3, the instructions work also with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. In the message view, FileZilla shows the events of the connection. To see more details, choose the Show Detailed Log option. The log can help you identify and correct problems in your connection. You can copy the contents of the message view to the clipboard. Please note that it is limited to a finite number of lines. However, for a large volume of events, you may want to save them to a file. Open FileZilla Settings. Choose Logging. With this option, FileZilla adds a timestamp to all events. Check this option to save the events to a file. Choose where the log file will be stored. You have to choose a directory where you have the permissions to save, otherwise a warning message is shown. You may want to limit the size of the file to prevent the file increase indefinitely. When the file reaches the size, a new log file is created and the old one is renamed. You can also increase the level of details shown in the message view and in the log file. Keep in mind that increasing the level also increases the amount of logged information and affects the performance. Increase the level only if requested. In this video, you learned how to enable logging with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to a running Amazon EC2 instance with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to connect to an Amazon EC2 instance with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. To connect to your Amazon EC2 instance, you need its IP address or DNS name and the key pair file created when the Amazon instance was initially set up. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select SFTP-SSH File Transfer Protocol as the protocol. Enter the IP address or the host name of the EC2 instance. Select Key File as the logon type. Now enter the EC2 instance user. Use the Amazon Instance Key Pair file to log in. If everything is correct now, you can connect to the EC2 instance. Click OK to accept the host. In the right side, you see your directories and files. In this video, you learned how to connect to an Amazon EC2 instance with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Amazon S3 Cloud Service or any other S3 compatible service. Before start, make sure you have a S3 key pair. You will need both the access key ID and the secret access key in order to continue. You can get them from the S3 console website. Just click on the link to S3 console website you find in the video description. Now we can continue. First of all, you need to create a site entry for your S3 connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select S3 Amazon Simple Storage Service as the protocol. Automatically, FileZilla Pro fills the host name. Choose Normal as the logon type. Enter your access key ID and secret access key in the text boxes. If everything is correct, you can now connect to your S3 storage. In the right side, you see your buckets, directories, and files. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to S3 compatible cloud environments. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to non-Amazon S3 storage providers like DreamObjects or DigitalOcean, which we will show you here as a sample configuration. In the video description, you will find a link to a wiki page with the DigitalOcean instructions. Ask your provider for the endpoints and regions. You will need them to configure FileZilla Pro. You need also your access and secret keys. Launch FileZilla Pro. Open the S3 Providers configuration. FileZilla Pro already has the configuration to connect to the Amazon S3 provider. For non-Amazon providers, you need to add the provider configuration. 
In order to add a new provider configuration, click the Add button. Name the provider as you wish. In the region list, you enter the regions as supplied by your provider. Choose Add to enter a new region. Enter the name of the region. Double-click the description and enter it. Double-click the endpoint and enter it. Perform the same steps for the other regions. The catch-all entry is used to handle regions not yet known. Note that this entry starts with a dot. The format entry is used to build the endpoint for unknown regions. The placeholders bucket and region are used to replace the respective bucket and region values. Now you can create a site to connect to your provider. Create the site and choose Protocol S3. Modify the host to your provider hostname. Enter the access and secret keys. If everything is correct, you can now connect to your provider. In the right view, you will see your buckets, directories, and files. In this tutorial, you learned how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to non-Amazon S3 storage providers like DreamObjects or DigitalOcean. In this tutorial, you will learn how to synchronize your local files and directories with the remote server with FileZilla Pro. While we use S3, the instructions work also with all the other supported protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla Pro. Connect to your site. From the main menu, choose Transfer File Synchronization. The Synchronization Options window shows the local and remote current directories. Select the synchronization type. Local to Remote uploads local files missing in the remote server and deletes remote files that do not exist in the local directory. Remote to Local downloads remote files that are missing in the local directory and removes local files that do not exist in the remote server. Bidirectional downloads remote files that are missing in the local directory and uploads local files missing in the remote server. This type of synchronization doesn't delete files. Then, select the criteria that will be used when the same file exists on both sides. Select Ignore to skip the files. Select Transfer if newer to upload or download when the source file is newer than the destination file. Select Transfer if sizes are different to transfer only if file sizes do not match. Note that FileZilla Pro does not compare file contents. Check Recursive to recursively synchronize files and subdirectories. Check Preview to confirm changes before they get executed. If not checked, the synchronization starts immediately. Click Start to begin the synchronization. If the Preview option was checked, a list of the changes is shown. Click Yes to start the synchronization. A summary of the changes made is shown. In this video, you learned how to synchronize your local files and directories with the remote server with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to use canned ACLs with Amazon S3. Each S3 bucket and file has an associated access control list, or ACL, with grantees and permissions. A canned ACL is a predefined set of grantees and permissions. FileZilla Pro can use a canned ACL when creating a bucket or file. Launch FileZilla Pro. Connect to your S3 site. From the menu, you can see the available options. The selected ACL will be used when uploading files or creating buckets. You can also choose the canned ACL from the status bar. Files added to the queue for upload include the currently selected canned ACL. The canned ACL will be set when the file is processed. Buckets created during the queue processing use the currently selected canned ACL. In this video, you learned how to configure FileZilla Pro to use canned ACLs with Amazon S3. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use AWS config and credentials files to connect with FileZilla Pro. You can authenticate with an AWS profile using the credentials or the config files. 
If a profile setting is both in Credentials and Config Files, FileZilla Pro will use the profile setting in the Credentials file. Launch FileZilla Pro. Create a new S3 connection or edit an existing one. In the Logon Type drop-down, choose Profile. Enter the name of the profile in the Profile box. Click Connect. FileZilla Pro will use the data from the Credentials file to connect to S3. In this video, you'll learn how to use AWS Config and Credentials files to connect with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to use a default storage class with Amazon S3. Each S3 bucket and file has an associated storage class. FileZilla Pro can use a storage class when creating a bucket or file. Launch FileZilla Pro. Connect to your S3 site. From the menu, you can see the available options. The selected storage class will be used when uploading files or creating buckets. You can also choose the storage class from the status bar. Files added to the queue for upload include the currently selected storage class. The storage class will be set when the file is processed. Buckets created during the queue processing use the currently selected storage class. In this video, you learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to use a default storage class with Amazon S3. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to change the properties of files stored in S3. Each S3 file has properties, storage class, permissions, metadata, and tags. FileZilla Pro can change those properties. Launch FileZilla Pro. Connect to your S3 site. Select the file you want to see the properties. Right-click or Control-click if you are in a Mac to open the context menu and choose the file permissions option. A window with the file properties is shown. The storage indicates which storage class the object belongs to. For a list of S3 storage classes, see the link in the description. You can change the storage class by choosing any of the available options. The permissions configuration allows you to control who accesses the file. Click the plus button to grant access to a user. Choose the grantee and check which permissions are granted. You can also remove a permission by clicking the minus button. Here in this area, you see the metadata associated with the file. You can add new metadata or remove existing metadata. Here you can add key value pairs, also known as tags, associated with the file. Enter the tag key name and the tag value. For more tags, click the plus button. For removing existing tags, click the minus button. Click Apply or OK to modify the file's properties. In this video, you learn how to manage properties of your files stored in S3 with FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to configure Amazon S3 server side encryption with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to set up Amazon S3 server side encryption with FileZilla Pro. Launch FileZilla Pro. With FileZilla Pro, you can configure how Amazon protects your files at rest. To set the encryption type for a file, choose the S3 server side encryption option. By default, files are not encrypted on the remote side. With the S3 encryption type, Amazon manages the encryption keys used to encrypt the file. This option allows you to protect your file with the keys from the Amazon Key Management Service. You can either use your default key or enter a custom key. You can manage the keys in the Key Management Service console. See the link in this video description. You can also set the encryption type for the whole connection. In this case, the encryption type is automatically set when uploading the files. The options are similar to the ones used for a single file. Use S3 encryption for S3 managed keys and KMS for keys from the key management service. The link in the description explains the different options. It is also possible to set your own encryption key. Use this option when you want to manage the encryption key yourself. The custom key is used to encrypt the file when uploading and to decrypt when downloading. Keep in mind that if you lose or forget the encryption key, you will not be able to recover your files. For details about the encryption types, visit the page Protecting Data Using Server-Side Encryption. 
see the link in this video description. In this video, you learn how to use Amazon S3 server-side encryption with FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to Alibaba Cloud. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Alibaba Object Storage. In the video description, you find a link to the Knowledge Base page with all the instructions. Launch FileZilla Pro. Open the S3 Providers configuration. FileZilla Pro has already the configuration to connect to Amazon S3. For non-Amazon providers, you need to add the specific configuration. In order to add a new provider configuration, click the Add button. Name the provider. In the region list, you enter the regions as provided by your provider. Choose Add to enter a new region. Enter the name of the region. Double-click the description and enter it. Double-click the endpoint and enter it. Perform the same steps for all the other regions. The catch-all entry is used to handle regions not yet known. Note that this entry starts with a dot. The format entry is used to build the endpoint for unknown regions. The placeholder bucket and region are used to replace the respective bucket and region values. Now you can create a site to connect to Alibaba Object Storage. Create the site and choose Protocol S3. Enter your provider host name. Enter the access and secret keys. In this video, you learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Alibaba Object Storage. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to StackPath Object Storage. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to StackPath Object Storage. In the video description, you find a link to the Knowledge Base page with all the instructions. Launch FileZilla Pro. Open the S3 Providers configuration. FileZilla Pro has already the configuration to connect to Amazon S3. For non-Amazon providers, you need to add the specific configuration. In order to add a new provider configuration, click the Add button. Name the provider. In the region list, you enter the regions as provided by your provider. Choose Add to enter a new region. Enter the name of the region. Double-click the description and enter it. Double-click the endpoint and enter it. Perform the same steps for all the other regions. The catch-all entry is used to handle regions not yet known. Note that this entry starts with a dot. The format entry is used to build the endpoint for unknown regions. The placeholder bucket and region are used to replace the respective bucket and region values. Now you can create a site to connect to StackPath storage. Create the site and choose Protocol S3. Enter your provider host name. Enter the access and secret keys. In this video, you learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to StackPath Storage. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to Wasabi Storage. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Wasabi Storage. In the video description, you find a link to the Knowledge Base page with all the instructions. Launch FileZilla Pro. Open the S3 Providers configuration. FileZilla Pro has already the configuration to connect to Amazon S3. For non-Amazon providers, you need to add the specific configuration. In order to add a new provider configuration, click the Add button. Name the provider. In the region list, you enter the regions as provided by your provider. Choose Add to enter a new region. Enter the name of the region. Double-click the description and enter it. Double-click the endpoint and enter it. Perform the same steps for all the other regions. The catch-all entry is used to handle regions not yet known. Note that this entry starts with a dot. The format entry is used to build the endpoint for unknown regions. The placeholder bucket and region are used to replace the respective bucket and region values. Now you can create a site to connect to Wasabi Storage. Create the site and choose Protocol S3. Enter your provider host name. Enter the access and secret keys. In this video, you learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Wasabi Storage. In this video, we'll teach you how to manage S3 lifecycle policies management with FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn how to manage your S3 buckets lifecycle policies with FileZilla Pro. Launch FileZilla Pro. Connect to your S3 site. On the right, 
you see the list of your buckets. Right-click or Control-click if you are on a Mac to open the context menu and choose the S3 bucket lifecycle policies. The configuration is shown. On top, you see the list of rules. If the bucket has no policy rules, you can set a default rule that cleans incomplete multi-part uploads after seven days. To create a new rule, press Add. Give the rule a name. Enable the rule to run it automatically. You can limit the scope of the rule. By setting the prefix, you can limit the rule to objects starting with that prefix. For example, objects under the Images subdirectory. You can also limit the rule to objects with specific tags. The rule will be applied only to the objects that match tag name and value. Then you have to select the actions that will be performed to those objects. You can add different actions to the rule. For example, move the objects to another storage or delete the objects. These actions are applied to the current version of the objects. There are corresponding actions for previous versions of the objects if the objects are version. You can also add the action to remove incomplete uploads. After selecting an action, you have to specify its parameters. Parameters differ for each type of action. Date determines when the action will take place. Days specifies how many days after object creation the action will take place. You can set either one or the other. The storage indicates which storage class the object will be moved to. For a list of S3 storage classes, see the link in the description. You can add as many actions as you want to the same set of objects, provided that you don't try to set the same action twice. Clicking OK will validate the rules and add them to the S3 bucket. In this video, you learned how to manage your S3 bucket's lifecycle policies with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Microsoft Azure Cloud Storage Services. FileZilla Pro has support to both file and blob Azure storage types. Before start, please make sure you have an access key. You will need it in order to continue. You can get it from the Microsoft Azure Dashboard Portal website. Just click on the link to the Dashboard website you find in the video description. Now we can continue. First, you need to create a site entry for your Azure connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select Microsoft Azure File Storage Service as the protocol. Automatically, FileZilla Pro fills the host name. If you want to connect to your blob service, you could select Azure Blob Storage Service as the protocol. Choose Normal as the logon type. Enter your storage account ID and access key in the text boxes. If everything is correct, you can now connect to your Azure file storage. In the right side, you see your shares, directories, and files. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Google Drive. Launch FileZilla Pro. First of all, you need to create a site entry for your Google Drive connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select Google Drive as the protocol. Automatically, FileZilla Pro fills the host name. Enter your account email address in the text boxes. If everything is correct, you can now connect to your Google Drive. You will be redirected to Google to authorize FileZilla Pro to access your Google storage. Enter your Google credentials to continue. Now authorize FileZilla Pro to access Google Drive. If everything is correct, the connection continues without problems. You can close the browser window at this point. In the right side, you see your own files and directories under the My Drive folder also files and directories others shared with you under the Shared With Me folder. And finally, under Team Drives folder, you see the G Suite Team Drives your Google account belongs to. If you have the administrative rights, you will be able to add or remove Team Drives by creating or deleting directories under Team Drives folder. In this video, you learned how to connect to Google Drive with FileZilla Pro.
In this tutorial, you will learn how to share your Google Drive files and directories with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. Launch FileZilla Pro. Connect to your Google Drive site. Right-click the file or directory you want to share. You can also select several files and directories and share them all together. The Google Drive Share window pops up, showing the object owner and any existing sharing permissions. Click the plus button to add a new sharing permission. In the Grantee box, enter an email for either a user or a Google group, a domain name in case of a G Suite domain, or leave it blank for everyone. Select the role type of the permission, owner and to grant ownership rights, organizer and file organizer to allow the organization of files within a shared drive, can edit to make them editors, can comment to allow them to comment, and can view to let them view only. You can add a custom message that will be included in the permission notification email. Custom messages can be used when granting permission to users or groups. The share links for each file and directory are shown in this box. You can select and copy to clipboard. You can remove an existing permission. The owner's permission cannot be removed though. Click OK to apply the changes. In this video, you learn how to share your Google Drive files and directories with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to download Google Documents with FileZilla Pro. Launch FileZilla Pro. Connect to your Google Drive site. You might need to authorize FileZilla Pro to access your Google Drive storage. Now you see your files on the right side. By default, Google Documents are downloaded as weblink files. You can choose to download them in another format. Supported formats are Microsoft Office, Open Document, PDF, or Text. FileZilla Pro downloads the selected documents in the chosen format. You can also set format defaults. The file is downloaded with the default format you set. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Google Cloud Storage Service. Before start, please make sure you have the ID of the project you want to access. You will need it together with your Google user and password in order to continue. You can get the project ID from the Google Cloud Resource Manager website. Just click on the link to the Resource Manager website you find in the video description. Now we can continue. First of all, you need to create a site entry for your Google Cloud connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select Google Cloud Storage as the protocol. Automatically, FileZilla Pro fills the host name. Enter your project ID and your account email address in the text boxes. If everything is correct, you can now connect to your Google Cloud Storage. At this point, you will be redirect to Google to authorize FileZilla Pro to access your storage. Enter your Google credentials to continue. Now, authorizes FileZilla Pro to access your storage. If everything is correct, the connection continues without problems. You can close the browser window at this point. In the right side, you see your buckets, directories, and files. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Google Cloud Storage using a service account. Open your Google Cloud Console. Authenticate if necessary. Go to IAM and Admin page in the navigation menu. If you don't have a service account yet, create one with permission to access your Google Cloud Storage. Click on the Service Account. Open the Keys tab. Create a new key. Select JSON as the key type. Click on the Create button and save the key file in a secure location. 
Now launch FileZilla Pro. Create a site entry for your Google Cloud connection. In the Site Manager dialog box, click New to create a new connection. Choose Google Cloud Storage with Service Account as the protocol. Use the Browse button to select the key file you created in the Google Cloud Console. Click Connect. On the right side of the interface, you will see your files and directories. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Dropbox. Launch FileZilla Pro. Start creating a site entry for your Dropbox connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select Dropbox as the protocol. You will be redirected to Dropbox to authorize FileZilla Pro to access your Dropbox storage. Enter your Dropbox credentials to continue. Now, authorize FileZilla Pro to access Dropbox. If everything is correct, FileZilla Pro will connect. Now you can close the browser window. In the right side, you see your files and directories. In this video, you learn how to connect to Dropbox with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to share files and directories on Dropbox using FileZilla Pro. Launch FileZilla Pro. If you don't have a Dropbox connection, create a new site entry. In the Site Manager dialog box, click New to create a new connection. Select Dropbox as the protocol. Click Connect to establish the connection and authorize FileZilla Pro's access to your Dropbox storage. Enter your Dropbox credentials and click Login. Grant FileZilla Pro access to your Dropbox account. Once connected, you will see your files and directories on the right side. To share a file or folder, right-click in the entry list and choose Share. You can select multiple files or directories. The sharing window will open, displaying the selected entries. Select an entry. Click Create to generate a shared link. In the Create Shared Link window, select the access type, viewer or editor, and who can access the link anyone or invited users. Click OK to create the link, which will be shown in the entry list. You can remove the link or copy it to the clipboard. To share the file or directory, click the Add button. The Add Member dialog will appear. Enter one or more email addresses. You can also enter a custom message. Dropbox will include it in the notification email. Choose the collaborator's role, editor, viewer, or viewer no comment, and click OK to add the collaborator. The list of collaborators is updated and you can remove a member by selecting them and clicking the Remove button. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Microsoft OneDrive, OneDrive for Business, and SharePoint. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to Microsoft OneDrive. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Microsoft OneDrive. Launch FileZilla Pro. Start creating a site entry for your OneDrive connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select Microsoft OneDrive as the protocol. Automatically, FileZilla Pro fills the host name. You will be redirected to the Microsoft website to authorize FileZilla Pro to access your OneDrive storage. Enter your Microsoft credentials to continue. and authorize the access request. The authentication window closes automatically. On Mac OS, a browser window opens automatically and you need to authorize the access. Then you have to copy and paste the authentication code you get in the browser. If everything is correct, FileZilla Pro will connect. In the right side, you see your files and directories. In this video, you learned how to connect to Microsoft OneDrive with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use FileZilla Pro to share files via Microsoft OneDrive. If you don't have yet a Site Manager entry for OneDrive, first create one. In the description for this video, you will find a link to a tutorial showing how to create a OneDrive connection entry. Launch FileZilla Pro. Connect to OneDrive. You will be redirected to the Microsoft website to authorize FileZilla Pro to access your OneDrive storage. Enter your Microsoft credentials to continue. Authorize the access request. 
and authentication code is generated in the browser. Paste in the FileZilla authorization windows. If everything is correct, FileZilla Pro will connect. On the right side, you will see your files and directories. Select one or more files you want to share, right-click, and choose the Share option. The sharing window will open. It will show existing sharing permissions, if any. To add a new sharing recipient, click the plus button. Enter the email address of the recipient. You can choose if the recipient can view or edit the file. You may enter an optional message for the recipient. OneDrive will include it in the sharing invitation email message. You can specify if the recipient of the invitation is required to sign in to access the shared item. OneDrive may return an error if the recipient is not a OneDrive user. You can also create a sharing link for the selected files. Anyone with the link can view or edit those files. The created links are shown and the list can be copied to the clipboard. In this video, you learn how to use FileZilla Pro to share files with Microsoft OneDrive. The steps to connect to OneDrive for business are similar. You will need the organization administrator credentials to grant access on behalf of the organization, otherwise regular organization users will not be able to use FileZilla Pro to access their drives. First, launch FileZilla Pro. Create a site entry for your OneDrive for business connection. Click Connect to start the authorization process. Enter the Organization Administrator credentials. In the Permissions Requested page, mark the option Consent on behalf of your organization. Choose Accept to grant access. Now you are connected as the Organization Administrator and other organization users can also use FileZilla Pro to access their OneDrive files. In the remote side, you see your organization groups, sites, SharePoint documents, and the OneDrive files. A regular organization user can now access their OneDrive. Create a site entry. Click Connect to start the authorization process. Enter your credentials. In the right side, you will see the organization's groups, site, and SharePoint documents you have access to, and also your OneDrive files. In this video, you learned how to connect to Microsoft OneDrive, OneDrive for Business, and SharePoint with FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to share your files on the cloud using temporary links with FileZilla Pro. In this video, you will learn how to create a temporary URL with FileZilla Pro. While we use S3, the instructions also work with Microsoft Azure File and Blob and Dropbox protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla Pro. From FileZilla Pro, you can obtain a temporary URL for your files stored in the cloud service. To create the temporary URL, right-click the file and choose Temporary URL. In the Temporary URL dialog box, you see the URL for the selected file. In the S3 and Azure storage protocols, the URL lasts for 24 hours. For the Dropbox, the URL expires after 4 hours. You can click the Copy to Clipboard button to copy the URL to the clipboard. You can share this URL to others or open it in a browser. In this video, you learned how to create a temporary URL with FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to keep your authentication tokens safe with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to securely store authentication tokens with FileZilla Pro. While we use OneDrive, the instructions work also with Dropbox, Google Drive, and Google Cloud protocols. To learn how to configure connections with other protocols, watch the other tutorials you find in the video description. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. In order to grant access to data, Google Cloud, Google Drive, Dropbox, and Microsoft OneDrive require an authorization step 
which creates an authentication token. Click Connect. This step creates an authentication token that lasts until FileZilla Pro gets closed. Once you quit FileZilla Pro, all authentication tokens are discarded and you'll need to authorize protocols again at the next run. To preserve authorizations between sessions, you need to use a master password. FileZilla Pro now stores authentication tokens. And at the next run, you just need to enter the master password. By selecting this option, FileZilla Pro will prompt you for the master password just once per session. If you don't want to use a stored authentication token, you can instruct FileZilla Pro to forget it. Enter the master password and you see that FileZilla connected without the authorization step. In this video, you learned how to store the authentication tokens with FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to Backblaze B2 Cloud Storage with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to connect to Backblaze B2 Cloud Storage with FileZilla Pro. Before start, make sure you have our account ID and master application key. You can find them in the Backblaze B2 Cloud Storage Buckets page. You find the link in the video description. Launch FileZilla Pro. Start creating a site entry for your Backblaze connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select Backblaze B2 as the protocol. Automatically, FileZilla Pro fills the host name. In the Account ID box, enter your Account ID. In the Application key, enter your Master Application key. If everything is correct, FileZilla Pro will connect to your B2 Cloud Storage. On the right side, you see your buckets and files. In this video, you learned how to connect to Backblaze B2 with FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to WebDAV. In this tutorial, you will learn how to connect to a WebDAV storage with FileZilla Pro. Before start, make sure you have the WebDAV hostname, username, and password. Contact your provider to obtain this information. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. First of all, you need to create a site entry for your WebDAV connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select WebDAV as the protocol. Enter the host as supplied by your provider. Also, add your username and password in the respective text boxes. If everything is correct, you can now connect to your WebDAV storage. In the right side, you see your directories and files. In this video, you learned how to connect to an OpenStack storage with FileZilla Pro. In this video, you learned how to connect to WebDAV with FileZilla Pro. In this video, we'll teach you how to connect to OpenStack Swift. You will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to an OpenStack cloud service. Before start, make sure you have the ID of the project, the identity host, and its path. Contact your cloud service provider to obtain these information. Now we can continue. First of all, you need to create a site entry for your OpenStack connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select OpenStack Swift as the protocol. Enter the identity host and path and project ID as supplied by your cloud provider. Also add your account email address and password in the text boxes. If everything is correct, you can now connect to your OpenStack storage. In the right side, you see your buckets, directories, and files. In this video, you learn how to connect to an OpenStack storage with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Rackspace Cloud Storage. Launch FileZilla Pro. Start creating a site entry for your Rackspace connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select Rackspace Cloud Storage as the protocol. Automatically, FileZilla Pro fills the identity hostname. Enter the identity service path. It should read slash v2.0 slash tokens. 
enter your Rackspace account number. The account number can be found in your Rackspace profile page. Enter your user ID. Enter your password. Press Connect. If everything is correct, FileZilla Pro will connect. In the right side, you'll see a list of regions and your buckets and files. In this video, you'll learn how to connect to Rackspace Cloud Storage with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro to connect to Box. Launch FileZilla Pro. Start creating a site entry for your Box connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select Box as the protocol. Automatically, FileZilla Pro fills the host name. Press Connect and you will be redirected to Box to authorize FileZilla Pro to access your Box storage. Enter your Box credentials and click Authorize to continue. Now grant FileZilla Pro access to your Box account. To avoid re-enter your credentials, you can set a master password and let FileZilla Pro authorize you for next time you connect. For details on how to set the master password, see our security video. The link is in the description. If everything is correct, FileZilla Pro will connect. And in the right side, you see your files and directories. In this video, you learned how to connect to Box with FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to share files and directories on Box with FileZilla Pro. Launch FileZilla Pro. If you don't already have a Box connection, create a site entry now. To create a new connection in the Site Manager dialog box, follow these steps. Click on New to begin creating a new connection. In the Protocol selection, choose Box. The host name field will be automatically filled in by FileZilla Pro. To establish the connection, click on Connect. This will redirect you to Box to authorize FileZilla Pro's access to your Box storage. Enter your Box credentials and click on Authorize to continue. Now grant FileZilla Pro access to your Box account. Copy the provided authorization code and paste it into the designated field. Once connected, you will see your files and directories on the right side. To share a file or folder, right-click on it in the entry list and choose Share. You can select multiple files or directories. The collaboration window will open, displaying the selected entries. Click on an entry to select it. To create a shared link, click on Create. The Create Shared Link window will appear. Select the access type. Open allows anyone to access the link. Company restricts access to users within the user's organization or Collaborators grants access only to specified collaborators. You can add collaborators in the collaboration window. If the access type is open, you can enter an optional password that will be required to access the link. For open or company access, you can grant download or edit rights to the file. Click OK to create the link. The created link will be shown in the entry list. You can remove the link or copy it to the clipboard. To share the file or directory with collaborators, click the Add button. The Add Collaboration dialog will appear. Click Add and enter the email address of the collaborator. You can add multiple email addresses. Check the Notify by Email checkbox to send an email notification to the collaborator. Choose the role of the collaborator. Editor for making changes or viewer for viewing only. Click OK to add the collaborator. The list of collaborators is updated with the new collaborator. You can remove a collaborator by selecting them and clicking the Remove button. In this video, you learned how to share your files and directories on Box using FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla and FileZilla Pro to connect to Tardigrade Storage. Launch FileZilla Pro. Start creating a site entry for your Tardigrade connection. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select Tardigrade Storage as the protocol. Enter the satellite host name. This should be the satellite you selected when signing up. You find the link in the description. Enter the API key. If you don't have a key, visit the tardigrade.io dashboard and choose API Keys option to create one. Enter the passphrase that will be used to encrypt and decrypt your data. Press Connect. If everything is correct, FileZilla Pro will connect. In the right side, you'll see your buckets and files. 
In this video, you learned how to connect to Tardigrade Storage with FileZilla and FileZilla Pro. In this tutorial, you will learn how to configure FileZilla Pro MIME types. MIME types are file and format identifiers used to determine how to handle a file, like text slash plain to identify text files or image slash JPEG for JPEG image files. When uploading a file, FileZilla Pro has to inform the storage server about the MIME type associated with the file. Among supported storage services, the following allow to set the MIME type. Amazon S3, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud and Google Drive, Box, and Backblaze B2. To configure the MIME types, launch FileZilla Pro. Open the MIME types configuration. FileZilla Pro comes with a list of MIME types. Click Add to add a new MIME type. Enter the MIME type identifier. In the extension box, enter a file extension associated with the MIME type. FileZilla Pro will use the file extension to determine which MIME type to use. Add as many extensions as you want, separating them with spaces. Now FileZilla Pro might use the new MIME type when uploading files with that extension. In this video, you learned how to configure MIME types with FileZilla Pro. In this video, you learned how to use FileZilla Pro. FileZilla Pro is fast and reliable. Plus, it supports a variety of other cloud protocols. Amazon S3, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Storage, Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive, OneDrive for Business, Amazon EC2, Backblaze B2, WebDAV, and SharePoint. Are your website files ready to go? Time to get your copy of FileZilla Pro. Go to FileZillaPro.com and buy it with confidence. See you at the next video of the FileZilla Pro series.